Hey guys, Hackersploit here, back again with another video and welcome back to the exploit development series. Now in the previous video we talked about generating shellcode with uh, the Metasploit framework or MSF Venom as it's uh, so called. And in this video we're going to be looking at setting up our exploit development lab. Uh, so the purpose of this video is to essentially get you all up and running uh, so you can start developing your own exploits and work with shellcode. So we're going to be looking at installing your debuggers and your compilers, etc, etc. So this video is uh, going to be about two to three configurations depending on playing this as we go. So uh, you can consider this a complete uh, lab setup for the purpose of exploit development. So I'm going to be using Kali as my uh, attacker operating system or you can use any other penetration testing distribution so you can use Kali Parrot uh, Backtrack or whatever you want to use uh, and then I'm going to be using Ubuntu uh, as my uh, Linux target so you can uh, set up an Ubuntu, uh, an Ubuntu instance uh, this is Ubuntu 16.04 I believe uh, if I'm not wrong and I'm running uh, and I'm running uh, the latest version of Kali. I know it tells you that I'm running 2017.3, uh, but I just keep on upgrading this virtual machine uh, as I move along. So it's running the latest packages. And for our Windows uh, target uh, virtual machine, I'm using Windows 7, and I'll be showing you how to set that up in the next set of videos. So this video is going to be focusing on primarily setting up your attacker operating system and your Linux target. Uh, so without any further ado, let's get started. So. On your attacker operating system, uh, the most important thing that you need to have is your GNU compiler, your GNU C compiler or GCC as it's commonly referred to as. All right, so to install GCC uh, is really very simple. That's if you are using a different distribution that doesn't have it installed. If you are running Kali or Parrot, GCC should be installed. And uh, let me just open up the help menu right over here. And uh, if you just scroll to the top, you can go ahead and look at all the options available in regards to this tool. Now, of course, we'll be taking a look at all of this and some of you might uh, or already have experience with this tool and that's fantastic. So we'll be looking at how to use the GNU compiler. Now, if uh, if you do not uh, know how to install it, it's really very simple. Make sure you're using the latest, uh, make sure you're using the latest, um, you're using the latest sources list so that uh, you are able to get this. And uh, this is available in the Kali sources. So for some reason, if you don't have it in your Kali installation, it's very simple. So you can use the sudo apt-get install uh, gcc command, and that's going to install the GNU C compiler for you. As you can see, I already have it installed, and it's going to install all the dependencies for you uh, that you need for this tool, etc. And uh, you can then move along. Uh, the next thing that you will need is you will need a Python installation, uh, preferably a Python 2 installation. And I'll get to this uh, as we move along uh, later, in, later in the series when we talk about exploit development. So we'll be looking at that as well. So make sure you have Python, preferably Python 2, although Python 3 should work for this. And I will be updating you on that. All right. And the final thing that you need is you need to have the Metasploit framework or the Metasploit console installed uh, and you have to make sure that your database is updated completely uh, as we will be looking at the different exploits and how they work so that we can create our own. All right, so make sure you have the Metasploit framework or the console installed on your uh, penetration testing distribution or if you choose to use any other Linux distribution. All right, so this is going to be our attacker operating system and once you have all of that ready, we're pretty much good to go on that front. Uh, now, when you talk about configuring our target Linux uh, operating system here, which is what we're going to be using to attack. So this is going to be our base uh, Linux system that we will be attacking. Uh, so we need to essentially install a few things here. We need to in install a debugger and the, de the, the, the debugger that we are using is the EDB debugger. And I'll explain why we aren't using the immunity debugger for Linux uh, as we move along. But for now, just make sure you have a debugger installed. And of course, for those of you who are experienced in this, you pretty much already have your own favorites. So make sure you have that installed. Uh, so if you want to install EDB debugger, it's really very simple. I'll be posting the links in the description so you can go ahead and check them out for yourself. And by the way, since this is going to be our target operating system, you can uh, sort of minimize the resources that you do uh, give to this operating system. So you can probably reduce the amount of RAM that you have allocated to it. And that's for the people who are using computers that do not have a lot of RAM. So you can give it about, uh, you know, 512 to 1024 megabytes, um, you know, so uh, half a gigabyte to a gigabyte of RAM. That should be good. 
but of course you will need a uh, you will need a, a bit uh, as you set it up because uh, Ubuntu, as you know, does not work very well, especially the later versions in uh, low with low amounts of RAM. So uh, when setting it up, I'll be posting the GitHub rep uh, the, the GitHub repo, and I'll be posting the wiki right over here that'll help you get it installed on Ubuntu. Now, of course, you can configure your own target with any Linux uh, kernel or any Linux distribution. Uh, so you can use Debian if you want, and the process will be uh, pretty much the same. So as you can see, EDB, uh, EDB is essentially a cross-platform arc uh, where we have 32-bit, 64-bit uh, debugger, which is what we want. And uh, now, uh, essentially, when it comes down to installing it, you can go ahead and look at the screenshots right over here. And as you can see, it works on, uh, as you can see, it works on Linux, uh, and it isn't available on uh, any other operating system. And uh, as far as I know, as you can see, the Windows ports are underway with varying degrees of functionality. So yeah, this is pretty much a Linux exclusive at the at the moment, and I'll be keeping you updated with that as well. So when it comes down to the installation of EDB Debugger, what I'd recommend if this is your first time is not to just go ahead and clone the repository because you do have to compile and build it, is you need to go into the uh, the compile page, which I will post in the description. So you want to make sure and, uh, you want to make sure you select uh, the, co the correct compilation uh, guide here for the different distribution that you, you may be using. So you have Debian, uh, you have Fedora, and you have Ubuntu. All right, so the first thing you want to do if you are running Ubuntu is you need to make sure you have the uh, dependencies installed and that can be done right over here by simply copying this command here and that is used to step down or to essentially add uh, further arguments which in this case is essentially installing everything right over here. So you can simply just paste that and uh, I'll do that right now although I do have all of the packages installed. Let me just enter my password right over here. And you want to just go ahead and let that install. So give that a few seconds. It shouldn't take too much time. There we are. And I have all the dependencies installed. That's the most important thing. Now, when it comes down to building and running EDB, you want, uh, you want to essentially clone the repository. So you can go ahead and clone it to whatever directory you want. I already have mine on my desktop here. So if I just go uh, two steps back here on my desktop and let me just list the files in here. You can see I have the EDB debugger uh, directory right over here. So once you've cloned it, you want to change your directory into the EDB debugger folder and you hit enter. And once that's done, you essentially want to create a new folder called build, which I already have done right over here. Uh, there we are, build right over there. And after you've created it, you want to change your directory into the build directory right over here. And once that uh, is done, you want to then perform a CMake on it, which will start the compilation process. And uh, then after that's done, you want to hit make. And once that's done, that's going to give you your executable here. So if I list it right over here, you can see we have the EDB executable here, which can be launched directly, uh, directly from the terminal. Now, I do recommend that you run this from root. So uh, sudo bash, let me just run that. Or you can uh, you can essentially uh, sudo the, uh, the executable itself. So once that's done, uh, if I just list the files one more time, you can see it still exists. So I'm just going to run EDB and that uh, what that is going to essentially uh, make sure it provides is, is give us the entire interface that EDB comes with. So uh, just give that a few seconds to launch. And as you can see, that is EDB version one. And once that is started, you can go ahead and start uh, looking at the uh, the various interfaces that it does give us. So you have your registers, bookmarks, etc., and the data dump, and uh, you have your debugger error console, uh, the error console here, and you can also analyze the stack. We'll be looking at all of this, so don't worry if this is new to you. All right. So uh, for example, I can essentially open the EDB executable here, and we can go ahead and analyze it or debug it di directly from here. So if I just go to my desktop right over here and go into EDB debugger and go into the build folder and I look for the EDB executable and open it up right over here in EDB or the EDB debugger, you can see uh, right over here we have the executable running and we can go ahead and debug it and understand how it is essentially running. And this is very important because we'll be looking at how uh, you know certain programs have certain vulnerabilities and we'll be taking a look at how shellcode can be inserted, etc., etc. All right, so once you have uh, your EDB debugger installed on Linux, we pretty much are good to go on the Linux front. And uh, anything further than this, I'll be explaining as we move along so that I don't confuse you, uh, you know, before we actually move uh, in, in the right direction. 
Now, as I mentioned, uh, I am still looking at a definitive solution for the uh, for actually creating a Windows target. Uh, primarily, what you will need is you will need a debugger on that as well. And uh, the, the most recommended one that I do recommend uh, for Windows based operating systems is the immunity debugger. Most of you already know about that. And you will need a the GNU C compiler which is uh, provided by the CodeBlocks IDE, I believe. So I'll be showing you how to set that up when we start uh, working on Linux, uh, sorry, Windows exploits. All right, so that is pretty much what I wanted to cover in this video. So I just wanted to get you guys up and running with your environment and making sure you have all the tools that we'll need so that we avoid any confusion or any uh, any sort of misunderstandings as we move along. That being said, that is going to be it for this video, guys. Thank you so much for watching and thank you so much for the support on the channel. We have finally hit 200,000 subscribers and that means a lot to me because, again, that also is a, another form of responsibility, which means I am liable to you guys and my job now is to provide you with the best information and the best videos in terms of quality and information and knowledge as uh, as, as as I can. Uh, so again, once uh, again, thank you so much for watching this video. If you have any questions or suggestions, let me know in the comment section on my social networks or on my website, and I'll be sure to get back to you on any of those platforms. So I'll be seeing you in the next video.